The importance of natural product, because maybe some of you are, are not in the field here in the audience, then I would like to summarize a little bit our analytical strategies to, uh, to found, find out interesting natural product in crude plant extracts. And then uh, I will discuss a few applications, uh, mainly in relation with uh, metabolomics and also uh, uh, drug discovery uh, in the microgram range. So why are we dealing with uh, natural products? Uh, natural products uh, as also uh, Darren showed it very well before, are uh, a privileged structure, very complex structure. And uh, the, of course, uh, the advantage of working with such uh, compounds is that they have been shaped by nature. So uh, during the evolution, uh, through chemical ecology relationship, uh, through also usage with, uh, uh, by the man since many uh, many, many years, and uh, thanks to the chemodiversity, they, they have been shaped into molecules which can act on, on different targets. And uh, of course, this is, uh, this is a really a nice situation when you want to do drug discovery based on, on natural products. Uh, and these, these compounds occupy a very large chemical space, and you can actually uh, calculate this chemical space by calculating the, the chemical properties uh, of these compounds and uh, you can even compare uh, the chemical space which are occupied by natural products as you see here maybe from compounds coming from uh, combinatorial chemistry uh, and you see here that indeed uh, the diversity of natural products is very broad and that's also fitting quite well with the, the chemical space of the drugs that you find now on the market. So you need this very high complexity to, uh, to um, have a, a good affinity for, for, for the targets, for the biological targets. Um, and this was, you know, these numbers from uh, a review from uh, Newman and Craig, and they still show that about 30, 35% of natural products uh, are the new chemical entities which makes the, the new drugs. So this is still a good uh, situation in the industry, but industry tends to uh, do less and less natural products because they are quite complex. And one of the problems is that uh, as entities, of course, they are very interested, but very interesting, but, but you need to have them in a pure form. And one of the problems is that when you are dealing with a crude plant extract or microorganism extract, you will get these products uh, mixed in very, very complex mixtures. So uh, in our group, we are uh, trying to develop uh, strategies to isolate these compounds very efficiently from very complex mixtures. But we also develop uh, metabolomics approaches or metabolite profiling approaches to characterize the mixture or even uh, use them as, as a whole. So we have different type of activities. Uh, so we have this bioactivity guided fractionation methods where we try to, to have very rational methods to go straight on, on, on pure bioactive compounds. Uh, but we develop different other aspects like uh, uh, metabolite profiling methods for the early and rapid uh, online identification of natural product directly in these very complex mixtures. Uh, we develop also bioassay uh, that we can use uh, in combination with HPLC for uh, HPLC biological profiling. So by this way, we can target, for example, antifungal compounds directly from an HPLC chromatogram. So you can go very rapidly on bioactive compounds. Uh, and we have a part of our research which is related to metabolomics, where we try to classify, for example, plant or micro microorganism based on the whole metabolome or we use also these methods for looking at compounds which are induced de novo when you stress, uh, for example, microorganisms. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we develop methodologies uh, in order to have a very rational and rapid isolation of any compounds in these very complex extracts to bring them in a pure form for NMR characterization at the microgram scale, so we have quite sensitive uh, NMR detection method to do this 
uh, and our goal is to find out new uh, novel chemical entities with uh, good uh, activities, low toxicity uh, for developing new drugs. So that's a little bit the main uh, so kind of quick summary of, of our activities uh, in the field. So <clears throat> and we have been working, especially in the group of Professor Hostetman, in, uh, in, uh, in classical bioactivity guided fractionation studies where you start with medicinal plants, you end up with pure compounds and you have to follow the activity by different bioassays. So this is, as you know, uh, done usually uh, at the milligram scale for getting pure compounds, but you have to start with sometimes kilogram uh, of uh, plant material. So this is a very, very long process. Uh, and we are trying now with the new methodolog methodologies to scale down the whole, um, this whole uh, bioactivity guided isolation process to do it uh, with only a few milligram of extract to end up with microgram of compounds and have bioassay as well as uh, uh, methods for uh, identification of the compounds at this very small scale. So this is much more rapid and rational. But of course, sometimes you need to go back to the milligram scale to have enough material to do, for example, in vivo studies or perform more uh, structural identification work. And that's where I think synthesis, as this, has won as this was shown before uh, by Darren, is very important for, for the last steps. Uh, so we use the same profiling methods, uh, so like LCMS, LCNMR, uh, that we are using for characteri characterizing the extract here also in the frame of uh, metabolomic studies. So the, these metabolomic studies uh, are involved in this process where actually you will try to get a whole metabolome profile of any given organism, either by NMR or mass spec, uh, and uh, use then data mining methods like chemometrics in order to classify uh, plants according not only to one or few compounds, but according to the whole metabolome, and that allows you to check for, for differences uh, between plants of the same genus, for example, or to check for uh, modification of the metabolome that can highlight biomarkers, which can be bioactive, for example, for, for drug discovery. So the idea is then, uh, based on these data mining methods, to find out uh, some biomarkers and then identify these biomarkers, and uh, as this, I will mention this also during the, the courses here, this is a, these are a little bit like needle in haystacks, and you need to find the right methods first to highlight these needles and then to characterize these, these compounds. So we are using different methods to do this. Uh, you can profile extracts based on, on NMR, on mass spec, or on HPLC, and each of these methods have their own characteristics. So this is the kind of things that I'm trying to teach now during the courses. But the take-home message is, is quite simple. So if you look at an NMR spectra like this one, you have to trust an NMR spectra because, uh, and this was told to me by Jan Wilson, NMR is uh, like your mother. It always tells you the truth. So I don't know, Darren, you always trust NMR or when you, when you follow your reactions? Sometimes, yes. <laughs> so, so that's, that's uh, uh, why, why NMR is always tell you, telling you the truth when you profile an extract. One very simple reason is that in an NMR spectra, even if you have a multiple component in it, uh, if you get a signal which is a very strong signal, it will be quantitatively correlated to a number of protons. So somehow this picture, even if it's very complex, gives you already a very uh, uh, good image of the, of the composition of a, of a given extract. A main peak will correspond to a main constituent. So it's very nice to get this picture to characterize uh, uh, mixtures. On the other hand, you can analyze also the same extract with mass spectrometry. So for example, in, in this case, we just infuse an extract in a very high resolution mass spec instrument. And you see, you get a very high resolution profile. 1,000 compounds were detected, but you, have, you, you don't always have to trust mass spec because, again, this was a statement from Jan. Uh, you see, MS is like your lover. It always tells you what you want to hear, but it always lies to you. You know, because uh, you, you know this. You, you know, you are bringing any, sometimes even pure compounds to a guy who's doing mass spec. 
he, he brings you so many ions, you, maybe you can pick one, one which is interesting and uh, you might be happy. But uh, why? Why is that like that? Like that you know? uh, because here, we, you have a very nice high resolution image of a, of a very complex mixture, but uh, uh, you, maybe one of the main ions here might just not be related at all to your sample. It's maybe contamination from the guy who just injected something before on the mass spec, for example. Uh, so it's very complex to interpret this type of data, but, but the message is not so bad because, uh, you know, I ask Jan and they say, ah, you don't have to tell this like that. You maybe have to add another point. So for MS, you need to convert your lover to partner so that from expertise or experience, you know when it's lying and you can make appropriate adjustments. So you, you need to know what you are doing with, with this high-tech stuff. And uh, uh, if, if you know how the compounds are ionized or if you know what is the background of your instrument, you can start to really uh, extract uh, the data. And, and that's a very, very nice tool. So don't uh, misinterpret what I'm, I'm saying. MassSpec is, is a very nice tool. But you really need to know what you are doing. And uh, uh, keep in mind that, yeah, you have to know well your instrument before starting to do this type of analysis. And as a phytochemist, we are still believing in the power of chromatography for separating compounds. And also in, in this aspect, there was interesting now new development from HPLC, which goes now uh, onto uh, UHPLC as well. And you see, you can get very uh, high resolution profiling with these new methods. And here you can profile a few hundred constituents. So, why uh, chromatography is still interesting? For us, it's nice because on one hand, you can separate quite a lot of compounds in a, in a crude extract if you have a good mastery of the chromatography conditions. And on the other one, you know, you can hyphenate this type of separation with different detection methods such as mass spec, UV, and NMR. So, uh, of course, mass spec is quite easy now to hyphenate. NMR is much more complex, and I think there will be other talks about this, this aspect today. But if you combine this type of data on ideally any of these peaks, you can do a, a, an early identification aspect. On the other hand, you are interested to isolate bioactive compounds. So you can also use bioassay to profile the activity of the peaks over the HPLC chromatogram and localize, for example, interesting antifungal compounds. And where, wherever you have spots here, uh, this can be correlated to, to any peaks in the chromatogram, and you know exactly where you have the bioactive compound. So that's when everything is working fine. It's always like that, but I mean, just to show you some ideal case. Um, so for all this complex mixture, you need resolution. And uh, the new methods allows you to get more resolution. So if you have a low resolution HPLC or a low resolution mass spec, you, you get an image, but this image is, is not easy to interpret. If you get more resolution, it's like with a picture on a camera, uh, you, you, you will improve the, uh, the, the definition of what you can get in an extract, for example, and you see that the, the picture gets more clear. And finally, if you are able to hyphenate both LC and mass spec, uh, you can get a very, uh, a very detailed picture of the metabolome, and then it's like on a picture. You start to get the resolution, which allows you to identify this lady. Everybody knows this lady. Uh, so Marilyn. Uh, so just to, to tell you that, yeah, you need to have these very high resolution aspects to, to profile a mixture. Uh, and uh, one of the, one of the issues now is not only to profile uh, such a complex extract, but all these dots will cos correspond to different metabolites. And now you, are, you need to identify these guys. So this is another uh, challenging step for, for chemists. So you can do this with database search interpretation. I would like to show you a few strategies that you can use for doing this uh, very early their application aspect. So in our lab, we are mainly providing extract with this uh, UHPL of ms type of uh, uh, platform. And also, we then perform the NMR experiment on this uh, uh, very small capillary NMR system, which allows you to get the NMR spectra really at the microgram scale. So let's speak a little bit about the UPLC of MS. So uh, I, I showed this during the, the lectures, also during the course. Uh, this, is, this was the kind of standard uh, HPLC MS profile that you can get uh, on, on a given uh, plant extract. So this is, for example, ginkgo. 
I don't know in, in Brazil if everybody is using ginkgo. In, in Europe, the students before the exam, they, they eat a lot of ginkgo because it should enhance you know, the, your, your, um, the circulation, uh, vascular circ circulation in the brain and you should have better performances, you know. You know. Uh, but, uh, and, uh, but there is a lot of compounds there, flavonoids and terpenoids, and you see, if you analyze this uh, by UHPLC, instead of using HPLC, you can increase a lot the resolution of separation. And you have a factor of about four in enhancement of resolution when you do the same analysis time. So this is a very nice method to really dig into the complexity of this plant metabolome.